How's everybody doing this evening? Everybody doing all right? Glad to see everybody in the house of the Lord tonight. How many came with a spirit of expectation tonight? Oh, we got a few. I, I tell you, if you weren't here this morning, I tell you, God was in the building, and uh, we're thankful for what he did, but we're also thankful that the same God that moved this morning is going to be the same God that moved this evening. And we're believing that he's even going to do even more tonight than he did this morning. And it all starts with the expectation of the people coming in in agreement and seeking the kingdom and seeking after him and his will. Uh, as just a reminder, we will be having our men's retreat February 26th. And then we'll be having uh, Gary Keelan, Pastor Gary Keelan with Redemptions to the Nations, teaching on evangelism on the 27th. With both of those events, there are sign-ups on the board right there at, as you exit. Uh, if you're interested in that, uh, make sure you sign up. The men's trip is free, so the church is covering it. Uh, so don't let finances or something like that be in the way of not going. We want everybody that wants to be or able to come. We want you to come be with us in this time of fellowship and growth as men. And uh, we're looking forward to what God's going to do with that. Ladies, make sure you send your husband. I'm sure you'd want a break from him. So go ahead and kick him out the door. We'll send him back with a new kind of tune. Amen. <laughs> um, what else? Oh, yes. We have Impact coming up this Saturday. Uh, if you're interested in doing door-to-door -door and reaching the community, we'll, we will be having Impact here at the church at Saturday. We'll meet here at 10 o'clock. Uh, so if you're interested in being part of that evangelism, knocking on the doors, reaching our community, that will be this Saturday at 10 o'clock. Um, I might be missing something. They'll come back and hit it, whatever I missed. Uh, so I'm just glad to be able to get through what I had to get through. So anyway, we'll go to the Lord right now in our tithes and our offering. Ushers, if you would, come forth. I mean, it knows this is in the this is the time where you're sowing in to what you need, what you're expecting God to do in the atmosphere. The word says it's better to give than it is to get. It also says that it would be shake down, press down, shake over, and return back unto you a good measure. How many thankful for that? Whatever you sow in the kingdom, God brings it back. Double fold, good measure. I'm believing in this time. It's the setting of the atmosphere. It's not always financially, but you can come in and say, God, I'm going to give you my worship tonight. How many can say, God, I'm going to give you my worship? Or it can be your praise, whatever it is. All I ask is at this time, give all God has given for you to do in this service. And I believe God will meet that need exceedingly and abundantly. So at this time, we're going to go ahead and go to the Lord in prayer. Bless this offering and bless the tithe and bless the service. Lord, we thank you, God, that we have came here with our earnest expectation, Lord. We believe, God, that you're still the same God that you were yesterday, today, and forever. God, we thank you for the power of the Holy Ghost in this place, Lord. Lord, we thank you for a name above all names, that name Jesus. Lord, right now we thank you. You've given us the keys to the kingdom, that whatever we bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever we loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Lord, we thank you right now for loosening the glory of the Lord in this place, God. God, I thank you right now, God, that your word said that when you'd bring your whole tithe to the storehouse, that you would open up the heavens and pour it out. I thank you right now. There's an outpouring of the Spirit in this place, even at the very beginning of this service. And, God, we give you glory and honor in Jesus' precious name. And all the saints said, amen. And let's worship. Let's do this old hymn tonight, amen. Says, well, as I journey through this land, singing as I go, pointing souls to Calvary, to their crimson flow. Many arrows pierce my soul from without within. Oh, but my Lord leads me on to Him. I must swim. And though I want to see Him look up on His face, let us sing forever of His saving grace. Well, all the streets of glory, let me lift my voice. Here's our past, home at last, never to rejoice. One more time. Well, oh, I want to see him look up on his face. Let us sing forever of his saving grace. All the streets of glory, let me lift my voice. Here's our past, home at last, never to rejoice. Now when in service. 
Christmas for my Lord. Dark may be the night, but I'll cling more close to him. He will give me light. Satan's there may vex my soul, turn my thoughts aside. But my Lord goes ahead, leaves whatever it's high. And oh, I want to see him look upon his face. There to sing forever of his saving grace. With all the streets of glory, feeling my voice. Years all past, home at last, ever to reach. Sing it, baby, come on. Yes, oh, I want to see him look upon his face. Now when the me billows rise from the mighty deep, then my Lord directs my bark, he does safely keep. As he leads me gently on through this world below, well, he's a real friend to me. Oh, I love him so. Say, oh, I want to see him look up on his face. Let us sing forever of his saving grace. Well, all the streets of glory, let me lift my voice. Here's our past, home at last, ever to rejoice. One more time. a new one for us tonight, so bear with us. Amen. I pray it blesses somebody tonight. I thank God when I went as far as I could go when I thought nobody could find me. I'm glad Jesus found me right where I was, don't you? Ain't you glad he came looking for you one night? Amen. I said, ain't you glad he came looking for you one night? Amen. Ready? One night while alone, life's raging sea, it looked as if I would suffer defeat. As the brightness of night 
Close off the lights, my heart sank with fear. Well, my desperate cry rang out with fright. All I could see was no hope inside. With faith all but gone, I met the one who came looking for me. was near to rescue my soul and to calm all my fears. I'm safe from all harm since I met the one who came looking for me. Yeah. I like this verse. Listen. Oh, Satan had already picked out my grave. His plan had moved forward to put me away. See, I drifted so far. Would anyone care that I'd soon be lost? I knew my destruction was a matter of time. Oh, the Jesus of here said, this old boy's mine. Now I'm safe from all harm, for he walked through the storm. He came looking for me. who I used to be. Thank God I got fresh blood. <laughs> I got a new DNA in my body. <laughs> I got royal blood flowing through my veins. I'm glad the devil couldn't keep me. I'm glad hell couldn't stop me. I'm glad the adversary couldn't hold me. But when Jesus said, loose him and let him go, I had to be set free. And those that are set free are free indeed tonight. Amen. Hallelujah. Let me talk to you. That second verse goes like this. Oh, Satan had already picked out my grave. <laughs> His plan had moved forward to put me away. See, I drifted so far. Would anyone care that I'd soon be lost? I knew my destruction was a matter of time. Oh, but Jesus appeared, said that old child's mine. I'm safe from all harm, for he walked through the storm. He came a looking for me. was near to rescue my soul and to calm all my fears. I'm safe from all harm since I met the one who came a looking for me. Now I'm safe from all harm since I 
Somebody say he couldn't keep me forever. The devil couldn't. <laughs> but Jesus got a hold of my life. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. raging high the waters around them they were troubled that night fear filled their hearts and they thought they would die they failed to remember that the master was nigh. he spoke the words and the winds all stood still even the they obeyed his will and he called their storms listen just like he will mine if I just remember that he lives deep inside so I should I worry why should I fear with the very same Jesus he is always so The storm passes by. with them. He brought light to their darkness when the way grew so dim. How great it would be, listen, to have his steps lead in mine and to walk with the master all of the time. And when trials come and death is so nigh, I'll just call on the master. I know he'll get there all time. And when sickness comes and my body's in pain, you see all I have to do is just call on his name. Why should I worry? Why should I fear? With the very same Jesus, he's always so near. He lives in my very same Jesus he is always so near he lives in my heart 
and he hears when I cry. I can call on his name till the storm passes by. Sing that again like that. Why should you worry? Why should you fear? <laughs> when the very same Jesus, my friend, he's always so near. He lives in my heart and he hears when I cry. I can call on his name till the storm passes by. I can call on his name till the storm passes by. Come on, give it a clap and a shout of praise tonight. If you know that's the kind of God you serve tonight, come on. Hallelujah. Amen. How many is thankful tonight that we serve a living God tonight? Come on now. I said, how many is thankful we serve a living God tonight? We don't serve a dead God. We serve a God of resurrection power tonight. We serve a God that he just asked, he said, Son of man, can these bones live? And he began to speak to the bones, and bone by bone, piece by piece. It said that they rose up and they exceeded a great army. How many is thankful to know tonight that God only asks for us as believers just to speak? Oftentimes we can find ourselves overcomplicating things that God is wanting to do. But all God requires of us is a yes. How many tonight can say, God, you got my yes tonight? I know I look around me and I see dead things all around me. I see graves. I see things that can torment me, hold me back. But all God says is, Son of man. I'm on somebody look at your neighbor and say, Son of man. Can these bones live? I want you tonight just to, I know the Bible says bones, but whatever right now is trying to hold you back, whatever's tried to keep you from pushing forward into God right now, I want you to put a clause that says, Son of man, can these, whatever that call was, whatever that desire was, and begin to say it's going to live tonight. Come on, somebody look at your neighbor and say, it's going to live tonight because the very same God that is sitting at the right hand of the throne is the same very God that sent, a, sent his only begotten son that whosoever would believe on him would have everlasting life and he loved this so much that he said I'm not going to leave it there I'm going to send him a Holy Ghost how many is thankful for the Holy Ghost tonight I don't know about you but I'm thankful to know that I got a Holy Ghost tonight that reminds me that all I got to do is speak I wish somebody real quick just begin to open up your mouth I know you've been thinking about a lot of things but I wish you be begin to speak tonight. Begin to speak faith over your life. To speak life. I know the enemy wants you just to think it's over. That you're going to die. That you're going to succumb. But that's not what my Bible said. He said he came that I may have life and life more abundantly. Somebody look at your neighbor and say you're going to live tonight. Come on son of man. Somebody look at somebody and say you're going to live tonight. Why are you going to live? Because he already came. Somebody look at your neighbor and say he already came. I know the devil's trying to make us think that we don't have a living God. But he's already came. He's already took his place on the throne. And the next time he comes back, he's taking you with him. How many is thankful for that tonight? The next time he comes back, he's taking you with you. He sent a Holy Ghost the first time. But the next time I'm going up in mind, body, and spirit, and I'm going to worship at the throne, I wish somebody praise him in this house. We serve a living God, a victorious God. If God be for you, who can be against you? Somebody praise him in this house. I tell you, I feel the Holy Ghost in this place. I tell you, I feel led. Sister Faye, you got a song, don't you? We're going to, Sister Faye, I, 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 come on, give her a hand, because she blesses me here. I'm thankful for Sister Faye and Brother Tommy. 
And uh, before we move forward, I, I want her to sing a song for us here tonight. So let's give her a hand clap. Most of all, let's give God a hand clap as she comes up. I'm glad tonight that I know that we'll never run out of the blood. That blood is there no matter what. And I put ribbons over my doors. And I said, no plague shall come nigh my dwelling. I've got the blood here and here. And there's no plague going to come nigh my dwelling. Tommy got Omicron. I didn't get it. I had bronchitis. I didn't get Omicron. But they brought oil over to our house. And I anointed the house. I anointed us. I opened the door. I said, devil, get out. You're not allowed in my house because the blood is in our house. So you're not allowed here. And I'm so thankful for that tonight.
that'll get you going. I don't know what will. How many is thankful for the blood tonight? Oh, that's a few of you. I said, how many is thankful for the blood tonight? Hey, here you go. I'm thankful to know I'm blood-bought, Holy Ghost-filled, and sanctified, set apart for such a time. It's not only are we blood-bought and Holy Ghost-filled. How many is thankful for that other clause? You've been sanctified. You've been set apart for such a time. A lot of times we think, Lord, why can't I never just fit in? You ever, you, why can't I get, do things other people can't? Well, you've been sanctified, and to be sanctified means you got set apart. It's, you've been marked by God, and how many think we've been marked by God today? I'm thankful to know I was marked by him, that things that got other people, it couldn't get me, for the Lord set me apart for such a time as this. I tell you, I believe God has a word tonight. Look at your neighbor, say word. For those that... We're here this morning, you know, the Lord moved in a mightily way, and we've been in this season here at the church where we've been getting to talk on this thing that we have to know as believers, that we've been diving into understanding the one thing that you have to know above all, that Jesus paid it all, and there's a future because he lives. How many is thankful to know that he lives tonight? But as we grow and come into this revelation, there are key points that we have to understand and use in our lives to keep us walking after and following Jesus and experience the fullness of God, of Christ in our lives, and the joy of the Lord that surpasses all understanding. Can I tell you, there's a joy tonight that we can have that surpasses our own understanding. How many tonight can say there's been times that I couldn't explain it, but there was just a joy that I had in my soul. And see, that's something that the enemy doesn't want the church to have is that, see, the Bible says in Nehemiah 8, it said, for the joy, somebody look at your neighbor and say joy, it said, for the joy of the Lord is my strength. See, I'm thankful to know that it doesn't say the joy in Justin or the joy in my life, but the joy in the Lord. How many is thankful to know that you can always have joy in the Lord? I, I know some of us want to act like you can have joy with all what you got, but I pray promise you, take it to the bay, there'll come some time in your life when you can't find joy in your own life. Is there anybody willing to be honest up in this house? When things in hell done broke bad, can I talk to some saying? When sickness is all around you, you prayed and you fast. You got the promise of the word that said, but by his stripes I'm healed. You got the promise of the word that said, but I got joy when I think about. But right now I'm laid up, busted up, and wondering God, where are you in the middle of all all this hell, but I came tonight to tell you, but I got a promise in the word that said, if you'll keep on standing and keep on trusting on God, it said that weeping endured for the night, but there's joy coming in the morning. Somebody look at your neighbor and say, it's about that time that joy steps in the room. I know you've been weeping. I know you've been busted up, but somebody look at your neighbor and say, I feel my help this evening. I feel the kind of thing that it Holds up in my body that I might have wanted to say, God, I'm done, I'm through, but there's joy this evening. Somebody look at your neighbor and say, Joy. But see, there's something we got to understand that the enemy doesn't want us to know. There is a joy and a peace that surpasses your understanding. And how does the enemy keep us from walking in the fullness of God? He's got to take the joy from the believer. Y'all ain't listening. Have you ever noticed that? It's when you start losing hope and joy. It's when your faith starts getting a little weak. Anybody going to be honest about that? It don't just happen overnight. I know that some of us live in this thing that you just started lost faith out of No, it started at somewhere along the way you started getting restless. Come on, be honest. My mind started wondering. I started second guessing some things in my life. Is there anybody willing to be honest up in here? Am I the only one going to be transparent? Let me tell you, joy just don't leave a believer. It started right here in the mind that you started questioning your purpose. You started questioning if God's really for you. And before you know it, the mind starts getting into some things when you lose your peace. Oh, anybody going to talk about that? Let me tell you, the enemy is after your peace tonight. The enemy is after the peace of the believer. But he's got to start in the mind. See, that's why the word said in Romans 12, my God, I ain't going to preach again on the Romans 12 verse 2. 
be not conformed to the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. I'm here to tell some people, it's got to start right here in the battlefield of the mind because the enemy is after your peace because what happens when the enemy takes the peace? The enemy starts warring in the mind. He gets us thinking, Lord, where are you in the midst of this? I'm second-guessing purpose now. I'm second-guessing the living God. I've heard my whole life I'm blessed coming and I'm blessed going. I've heard my whole life favor ain't fair. I've heard my whole life weeping in dirt for the night, but joy is coming in the morning. But right now, I'm in the pit. I'm in the mess. I'm in the muck. But how many knows in the muck of the clay? He said he'll pull me out of it. He'll pull me out of the snare. But what does the enemy do? He gets us caught up in the muck of the clay. He gets us caught up in the hell. He gets us caught up. Why am I? here why am I there why has this happened Joseph was the favorite of the sun with a coat of many colors that was a sign of royalty it wasn't like Dolly Parton with a coat it was a sign of favoritism and it said that whenever the brothers saw it and I tell you the fact that you got favor on your life is the fact you're going to be in a pit in your life but I came to tell somebody the transportation ain't always the way we want it how sometimes God will bring the slave driver to put you in ease because God said, I got to put you somewhere because you're going to be the overseer. But sometimes we don't get to choose the transportation. God sometimes will use your enemy to drive you to your destination. I got any saints willing to be real that the way I got here might have not have been the way the church thought it was going to be here. The way I got here didn't fit in with all the church folk. But I'm standing at a table and my cup is rolling over because I was not conformed to the world but transformed by the renewing of the word. I wish somebody say it didn't conform me, but I transformed it. Because favor ain't fair. Somebody say favor. But how does the enemy keep us from operating in favor? He takes your peace. The fact that hell done broke bad means you're on your way somewhere. Y'all listening tonight? The fact that hell done broke bad, you're on your way somewhere. Somebody look at your neighbor and say, I'm on my way. You better get that. Somebody better say something today. The enemy's thinking whether you're stuck. Look at your neighbor and say, but I'm on my way. I'm on my way. Somebody look at your neighbor and say, I'm on my way. It might not have been the way I thought it was going to be, but I'm on my way. Because why is that? He never leaves me. He never forsakes me. But he made a way out of nowhere. Look at your neighbor and say, I'm on my way. I'm on my way. He He'll show up at the drug house. He'll show up in the bar. He'll show up in the pit. He'll show up in the fire. Because when he's on his way, when you're on the way, it don't matter where you're at. Because God said, enough's enough. Favors ain't fair. We've been endured for the night, but joy is coming. Somebody say joy. joy. Right, somebody look at your own neighbor and say joy. But the peace of the Lord that surpasses all understanding. That's the point we don't like. It surpasses understanding. <laughs> we get overloaded. That's why he says, lean not on your own understanding, but trust in the Lord. Acknowledge him in what? All of that way. How's why? If you're trying to work this thing out in your natural, you're going to have an overflow, capacity reach, fried membrane thinking, God, what just happened? But what does the enemy do? How's he working? He knows the ride is on the way. Y'all listen to me. The ride is on the way. The ride is on the way. But it ain't what you think it is. I <laughs> just oh, man. Whenever we were sitting around in the coat of many colors, Joseph has a vision. And he begins to tell his brother, well, there's your first uno. Don't tell your vision to everybody because those that are with you that you thought were with you are really against you. And they're going to put you in a pit when you start telling their vision. I just say, who is that one to tell me I'm going to be over them? Who is that one that God elevated above? I am the firstborn. But how many knows your words uh, that he'll take the last and he makes them first? God don't care when you were born. God don't care when generation you came in. God's looking for somebody to say, lock me up in a prison. Throw me in a pit. But I ain't going to curse God. I'm going to keep my integrity intact. That's why the ride is on the way. The ride is on the way. Somebody say the ride is on the way. 
The fact of the thing is, it's the coat, what happened? The Bible, they couldn't kill Joseph. Why? The brothers are congregating about it, but there was something on Joseph's life that says you can touch the coat, you can rip the coat up, you can put blood on the coat, but you can't kill Joseph. Uh-oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on now. The enemy can cut you, cut your coat up. They can do all this and do that. But God says you can't kill him. You can go back and tell Jacob, here's the coat. He's dead. I don't know what's going to happen, but God said, hey, hey. You ain't dead yet. Somebody look at your neighbor and say, you ain't dead yet. They might have tried to put out a warrant on you and said you're dead. They might have even got your number. They might even got your code. They might have even smeared your name. But look at your neighbor and say, I ain't dead yet. That's why the ride is on the way. The ride is on the way. Somebody look at your neighbor and say, my ride's on the way. My ride is on the way. So I'm, let me tell you, you might have took me in to be a slave, but I'm about to go to Potiphar's house. And guess what? His wife's going to lie about me. Me, and I'm about to go to a prison, but there's going to be somebody there that needs to get a vision, and I'm going to be the one there to tell them because I still trust you, God. And then this, what's that's going to happen? That old cook's going to go tell Pharaoh, there's an Israelite boy there, and he hears from God. Though he's been through hell and back, but he still trusted God. Don't judge the way of the transportation because it's on its way. Because why? The step is ordered. Look at your neighbor and say, my step is ordered. That's cute. Some of you think that. But look at your neighbor and say, my step is ordered. The Bible tells us in Psalms 33, verse 23 and 24, it said the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. How many people know your steps been ordered? I know the enemy don't want you to know this today. But I came to bind that donkey off your back. God knew you ending from your beginning. Let me tell you, you ain't called God all surprise yet. You're at a divine appointment that God's letting you realize the step was ordered. The ride is on the way. Somebody better understand what I'm trying to tell you tonight. The ride is on the way. It might have been this and that and that, and you thought, why was that the ride? Well, it got you to where you needed to be at the right time in the right moment, the right pour out, the right Holy Ghost, the right message. I don't care if they cussed you out all your way to church. I don't care how much you didn't like them. But guess what? The ride was on the way. As God, they drove you crazy, about broke you bad. But guess what? The ride was on the way. Because why? The step was still ordered. If you'd have known why the enemy's fighting you like he is, because your ride is on the way. Oh, y'all ain't listening. If you'd have known your ride was about on the way, some of you had already shouted up in here. Cause let me tell you, I don't know about you, but I'll be honest. It ain't fun waiting on a ride. And sometimes you think you're doing all the right things, but everybody's still talking about you. You're praying all the right ways, but the crowd is going down. Sickness goes out. Buying things happen, and you think, well, God, I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. But you got to remember, the ride is on the way. Even though it might look like it's impossible, but nothing's impossible to God. God has to strip it of the understanding. So when you get to where you're going, you can't say you worked it out. God worked it out. He used that devil to get me to where I was going to be. He used the backbiter to set me up on the stage. I wish somebody know what I'm talking about, that the fact that I'm standing here wasn't the fact that all the religious folks accepted me. They actually stuck me in the bag. But God said the ride was on the way because the step was ordered. And somebody say, it's my time tonight. But the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he is delighted in his way. Now listen, 24. Though he fall. Anybody in that one? My steps ordered. Then God says, though he fall. <laughs> though he fall. You tripped up. Come on, you got caught tripping. Anybody ever been that way? You got caught tripping. You slipped up. You got that little holier and thou mentality. My steps are ordered. My ride is on the way. But somewhere along the way, you stopped seeking God along the way. You started thinking, well, you know, favor ain't fair. And you got so used to the favor, before you knew it, you ended up running into a stump. Come on, anybody be honest? You ended up running into something because you weren't looking where you were going. Your head was up in the cloud and you were looking around. Why does the Bible say looking that straight? Get your eyes set. God never 
never intended for you to have your head up in the cloud. He said, get your eyes forward on where you're going. No wonder you keep on hitting your toe. Because the church is living in a la-la land, looking up in the sky and not knowing where they're going. Let me tell you, if God intended you to look up in the sky, he just said, keep on looking up. Jesus will come back. He said, why are you looking up? The same way he went up is the same way he's going to go down. But you got a step ordered in Jerusalem in the upper room. Started with 300, but 120 were left. What am I trying to tell you? Not everybody likes the way the ride's going to come. Because all the others would have been fine if they could have just keep on looking up. Y'all listening? Church done got caught up looking in the clouds instead of looking in the battlefield. Uh Uh-oh going to go ahead and say it like that. We got too busy looking up in the clouds and not looking in the battlefield. But the step is still ordered. So what does the enemy do? He wants to get you daydreaming. Get you caught slipping. Head in the clouds. No wonder an enemy come up and pop you. You ain't paying attention where you're going. You ain't paying attention where you're going. Try driving, not looking where you're going. Tell me how long that's going to go. I got faith all day long in the Lord, but if I'm dumb enough not to look to where I'm driving and run a stop sign, was it the devil that killed me or am I running a stop sign? When we talk about steps ordered, everybody knows to drive on the right side of the lane. But if you drive on the left side of the lane and you get hit head on like a chicken, was it the devil's fault? No, it's your fault for driving on the left side of the lane. But my steps order. Yeah, the step is ordered, but the word gives you the order how to drive the core. And when you're too busy looking up in the sky all the time, no wonder you're running stop signs and driving on the wrong side of the road. You don't forgot what's going to bring the ride to pass. And it's the word. Somebody better get right. We got laws for a reason. When you get a driver's license, that means you understand the law. Some of you got a driver's license. They don't need a driver's license. I know we're laughing, but we're talking about order, ain't we? The steps of the order of the Lord are ordered. The ride is on the way. But some of you don't even know how to get in a ride. That'd be like somebody said, I got thrown out of the windshield. I thought the Lord was going to. Well, they got seatbelts for a reason. Get hurt in an accident and be like, well, the Lord should have done. Where, where, are you, where are you wearing a seatbelt? Well, you know what? Don't take too much common sense to know. Put a seatbelt on. It's going to hold you in your seat if you get hit. And what's going to hold us? The Bible tells me the Word and Jesus. A lot of us got hit in a head-on collision, and you went through the windshield because why? You left Jesus behind, and you didn't have your seatbelt on. But, you know, people all the time, you know, there's that alarm that goes off on the seatbelt. I rode in Brother Frank's truck, and that thing is loud. Beep, 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 beep. You know what that's saying? Your seatbelt ain't on. Put it on. You know, how often are you going to church right now? And all you've been hearing is beep, 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 beep. And you know what you do? You just click on the seatbelt and you sit in front of it. You know how much more work that takes to click the seatbelt, to sit it down, to shut up an alarm? But when you get in the accident, it don't matter that the alarm went off, the seatbelt wasn't on. So a lot of us right now are saying my steps shorter and you're manipulating the system. But guess what? When the crash comes, you're still going to go through the window. But the real one that put the seatbelt on is going to be fine and down. We're taking cuts, shortcuts. Steps are ordered. Riders on the way, but we're taking shortcuts. Shortcuts. You'd rather, you would rather cheat that system to shut that alarm up rather than just put your seatbelt on. And you know how most of us are. You got that unsubmissive spirit. Ah, uh, yep. Ain't nobody going to tell me to put a seatbelt on. Rebellious. Come on. Hey, we ain't got any of that rebellious nature in a church, do we? They can't tell me to put a seatbelt on. Mm-mm. I put it on if I want to. Yeah, break your arm and go out the window. You say, well, I should put my seatbelt on. Laws are put in place for a reason where you keep you from getting hurt. You know what? Okay, 
talk. <laughs> oh, Lord. People's like, I don't want to listen to the word. All that word don't have to be. Well, it's there for a reason. Guess what? Because if you'll follow the word, it'll keep you from some heartache. I know right now that don't make sense, but guess what? Go on not living by the word long enough and eventually say, I wish I'd have just listened to what the word said before I even got in the trouble. That's what it is. We are reactive rather than proactive. We want to start praying and asking God to help us once to hell broke bad. How about the church be proactive and know, guess what? The word is a foot lamp. I'll stop it before it ever happens. I'll put my seatbelt on before I read. I'm going to stand on the word where I can't be moved. So when the devil comes a knocking, there's no collateral damage. Anybody know what I'm talking about tonight? Yeah, yeah. But the step is ordered. But it goes on and tells us, though, but when you mess up. We've all got a ticket, super speeder. I ain't been mudding. We've all got in trouble. <laughs> the steps order, the ride is on the way, but I fell, and I got caught. Come on, blue lights hit you. God caught you. Uh-oh, I'm in trouble. I'm paying for it. But he says, guess what? He said, though we fall, he shall not be utterly cast down. That's what he say. He said, I ain't going to let it keep you down too long. For the Lord upholded him with his hand. Because no man can unpluck you from the hand of the Lord. I might have fell in my natural, but I'm his, baby. I might have got a wreck. I might got a scar, but he's still holding on. Because why? The ride is on the way. Somebody better get honest and say, the ride is on the way, and the step is ordered. It ain't how you fall. It's how you get back up. Oh, yeah, yeah. You ever heard that? What makes a real champion? What makes you a real champion is not how you win. It's how you continue to win even after you lose one. It's easy. I, I wrestled, and, most of, and I try not to brand. And I won some state titles. But I learned my biggest wins was not how I won, but it was how I got back up after a defeat. Oh, sometimes you can make your way to the top of the mountain, and you can lose one. And I can sit down and cry about it, pout about it, why I fell, why I messed up. Or I can say, that ain't going to happen again. And I can get back up and train a little harder, be ready for what the next day. What am I trying to tell you? Just because you got there don't mean that there ain't going to be an enemy trying to knock your hind end back down. And it might happen, but you got to get back up. And you got to train a little bit harder, read your word a little bit harder, read a little bit more. Because the step is still ordered and the ride is still on the way. Somebody they say it's still on the way. Y'all listening to me tonight? I had you shouting a minute ago, but now we're talking real life, and you kind of like, I feel like I lost about half of you. But well, you better understand that the ride is on the way. The step is ordered. I know you fell. Listen, I ain't looking at a bunch of perfect people. I'm looking at a bunch of lost people that need Jesus. The church ain't full of holy people. The church is full of people that need Jesus. We all in need of Jesus. We're all sinners. And we all found a man that made a way when there was no way. We're all evidence that you can fall and get back up. And that's what the church is about. The step is ordered and the ride is on the way. Somebody better get ready. Yes, sir. Don't ever say don't back up now. I know you got a scrape on your knee. I know it hurts, but look at your neighbor and say get back up. Who am I talking to tonight? Look at your neighbor and say get back up. Get back up. Because the ride is on the way, okay? Get back up. The ride is on the way. If Joseph would have pouted about Potiphar's wife, then he would have missed the ride in the setup of the chef to go tell Pharaoh. Every step is ordered. But in every fall, there's a disorder. Every step is ordered, but in every fall, there's a disorder. Because when you fall... Something got out of alignment. I got discombobulated. I was unaware of the step, but God said the step was what? Ordered. Even in my fall, God ordered your fall. You ain't gonna hear that. God even ordered your fall. Because he knew where you were going to fall, and he knew where he was going to lift you back up. Come on, somebody. 
He let you go somewhere, and you thought that was rock bottom. But God said, I had to get you rock bottom so I could pick you back up. Because I got to knock all that nonsense out your mouth. Oh, you, yeah, come on. I tell you what, the biggest time I ever learned with God is when he knocked my hind end down. Come on, staring up and looking at the can, looking up at the lights, thinking, what just happened? And God says, hey, hey, big guy, you got a little too full of yourself. Let me go ahead and knock you down a few inches. But that was order too, and I love you. Come on now. You'd be like, why are you knock me down like that? How many knows you when you got a whipping by your daddy, you didn't think that was too fun? But guess what? You look at it now, you're like, Lord, I thank God that my dad whipped me because I got some common sin, how to discern this thing and how to be a man and how to walk in this world. That's the problem. Nobody knows how to fall and be lifted back up because sometimes you got to get whipped in a fall to be picked back up to know where to walk after so you won't keep on making the same mistake. That's the problem in the church. We got ordered steps real good. Everybody likes that. But when you fall, everybody pouts about it, and there's no correction in it, no lifting up of the Lord and back into the way of righteousness. So we got cycles. Oh, yeah. But it's time to break the cycle because all we do is go through the same old chunk every time, every month, the same thing knocking you down. And you think that's all you're meant to do is get back up and get down. But I beg a differ. At some point, you got to learn to stand. And when that devil comes a knocking, no, no. Nope, I'm going to keep on walking after the right way. I guarantee you getting a bad enough wreck, you won't run a stop sign no more. You get T-bone real good one time, I bet you'll look both ways before you pull out in traffic the next time. There's a reason things happen, and there's a reason things lead to what it happened. You got caught slipping. But look at your neighbor and say, the ride is on the way. Your turnaround is on the way. Your lift up is on the way. That's why Galatians 6, 9 tells us, And let us not grow weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we do not lose our heart. Look at your neighbor and say it's on. It's, time. it's about that time. It's your season. It's a new beginning. You fail. I acknowledge it, but your step's still ordered. That everything God does is allowed to open up your eyes and to learn from it. Because can I tell you this? Let's go ahead and make this clear. The devil can't come up with new attacks. The devil will always counterfeit what God is about to do in the next season. The devil can't do nothing new because why? The devil's future ended on Calvary. It's the same thing over and over. Because all he can do is counterfeit what God has already. Oh, y'all ain't listening. <laughs> but when we understand this, we know that the devil can't do anything new. So it's the same trick that the devil keeps you in the same cycle. If he can keep you in the fall, the same fall, the same place, then we're never growing. But I came to tell you, the step is ordered. But you got to learn to get back up and don't go back down the same path. But you got to start looking to Jesus. Because in every fall, Jesus was the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. That we may not understand his ways, but we can't understand his ways because his ways are higher than ours. But there's a joy and a peace today that says that even in my worst fall, my worst hell, God is still able. That where most men wrote you off, God never wrote you off. Where you failed, your worst mistake you ever failed, the worst thing you ever did, God didn't give up on you. He let you fall to where you had to look up. Sometimes that's the only time you'll look up to God's when you fall. Anybody honest to that? When you start seeking and calling on God's in the biggest part of a fall. But even in that, there's a lifting of the head moment. But we can't grow weary. Because if we ain't careful, we find ourselves being victim mentality. We find ourselves being vexed. Anybody know what a vexed mentality is? It means your mind is just stuck on something, how somebody hurt you. You know, Samson was a mighty man of God, a judge. But you know what Samson's downfall was? Yeah, he had a love of women. We know that. But Samson had a vexed spirit because he loved a woman. 
but he married a Philistine. And God said, don't marry Philistine women. And she told his secret. Told the riddle that he said, and, and it tore him up, broke him up, man, messed him up. And then the, you know how the Philistines are. They, they go on and kill her, burn everything. And then, you know, Samson, he gets mad. He catches the foxtail on fire, and it burns the field. And he grabs all this and disembowels on his vow. And now he's vexed. So when he gets Delilah, he can't let go. Ain't that funny how one season of your life, if you ain't willing to let it go, it'll lead to the cutting of the source of the anointing in the next season. Some of you just caught that. See, if we can't understand the steps ordered, we find ourselves vexed on the past and the fall. But if you don't leave that season behind and allow God to renew your mind by the word and by the peace that surpassed, you'll carry that vexed mentality into a season of life that will cost you your anointing. Because in one season, the vexed mentality didn't cost him, but it cost him compromising. Because as a judge, he couldn't touch dead things. And what did he do? He touched dead things. He did things that the vow told him not to, but he didn't lose the anointing yet. He had fell, but the Lord was upholding him. But can I tell you, that will only last for a little bit. Because eventually, the vexed mentality will lead you to the lap of the enemy. And if you don't realize your steps ordered and God's going to bring you out of it, you'll end up carrying baggage in the one season that used to not kill you but cost you compromising. Y'all listen to me about compromising. But in the next season, it'll cost you your anointing. But how many thankful immediately that God's grace allowed Samson's hair to grow back? But what did it cost him? Momentum and vision. What is that saying? God's fall, the fall is still lifting. But the enemies after your vision and the momentum that God has on your life. Because why? Time is of the essence. Time is of the essence. The enemies after momentum. Because can I tell you, the church is living in a moment now where the momentum's turning. A generation is looking to find answers. And if the church is too busy being vexed from one season of one life and the fall and not willing to understand that every part of it God ordered for such a time and lifting will carry one season's loss, victim mentality into the next season, which will cost you your momentum and cost you your vision. And the Bible says without vision... The people will perish. There's an essence of the time, and the church cannot grow weary now. Because the harvest is on the way. The ride is on the way. Philippians 4, 19 tells us, And my God will supply all your needs. He's already supplied you a way out today. According to his riches and his glory in Christ Jesus. Let your neighbor say he's already supplied it for you. He's not working on it. He's already supplied it for you. He's already given you the ability and the means to come out of where you are at today. Because of his son Jesus. And Lamentations 3 verse 21 and 24 tells us, This I recall to mind, and therefore I have hope. It is of the Lord's mercy that we are not consumed because his compassion fail not. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, said my soul. Therefore, I will hope in him. Philippians 4, verse 4 and 8 tells us, Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Look at your neighbor and say, God's still working. It tells you to be careful for nothing. One translation, be anxious for nothing. But in everything. Let your neighbor say everything. 
but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. I mean, can say I'm thankful, God. That's one thing we lost. We lost the ministry of thankfulness, thanksgiving. How many times can you hear somebody say, God, I'm thankful for you. I'm thankful for a roof over my head, shoes on my feet, food in my belly. We need to just be thankful again. You know, no wonder you can't think of steps order and a rise on the way and the fall got the best of you. You lost the ministry of thanksgiving. And David said before you can even enter into the gate, you got to learn to be thankful. No wonder we can't have a move of God. You don't know how to thank God for what he's gave you already. No wonder he don't want to bless you because you ain't sure as heck ain't going to bless him. My God, I'm going to preach. We live in a day and time now. We need the Holy Ghost to move you to worship God. Let me tell you, I don't know about you, but David didn't need a Holy Ghost to dance in his might. He could dance in his might because he was God. And every six steps, there goes another step ordered. Every six steps, he said, I got to praise you because every time I get thinking about the journey, I'll just stop and praise you for where I started at. And I'm not there yet, but I'm on my way. And I got to praise him in my worship. I wish somebody go ahead and praise him on the step. I know we got some mountain praisers but I got in a step praiser I ain't there yet but I'm gonna praise you on the step because my ride is on the way the step is ordered oh I fall you've lifted me back up God all things work to the good I feel that kind of anointing in here about to break something up in here I know we got the Super Bowl, but let me tell you, I celebrate the champ of the champs, and his name is Jesus, undefeated. You know what? The Rams and the Bengals, somebody's going to lose tonight. Jesus didn't lose. He's undefeated. The blood is Victoria. The Holy Ghost can't lose. You can't hold the Holy Ghost. They tried to put him in a grave, and he busted out of that thing. And just like the enemy tried to put you in a grave, the Holy Ghost and you's about to bust you out because the step was ordered, and the fall was ordered, and the hand of God is about to lift you out. Man. But there's got to be a recalling moment. I'm calling you to search yourself tonight. I know you're in a battle. I know you've been fighting. Battle tested. Some of you have been in the battle a little too long. You feel like you're about to smell like fire. Come on. The Bible said he come out and then he smell like fire. Some of you lived in a fire so long you might smell like some fire when you come out. But that's all right. Sometimes they talk about them Hebrew boys, but I was like, some of us come out and our clothes are ripped up, banged up, smell like fire, but I'm still here, okay? You know, I'm thankful to know I might have smelt like the hell I've been in, but I ain't still in the hell, because why? He still brought me out. Some of you still might smell like it. Got your clothes ripped up. You don't look like you come out of it pretty, but guess what? You're still alive, church. That's why the step was ordered and the ride was on the way. The fall was ordered. I wish somebody understand that I'll keep going around this thing until that donkey wall comes down. But in the name of Jesus, I want somebody to know the devil didn't order your step. Your daddy's stronghold didn't put you there. There's a God and a Lord of Lords and a King of Lean that said my weapon's not cardinal, but mighty through God and pulling down stronghold. Stop trying to fight the devil with worldly things. Pick up your Bible, start praying and say my daddy's blood, my daddy's curse ain't going to get me. My mama's curse ain't going to get me. My step was ordered to be a new creation. And I'm about tired of the devil that keeps pulling people back, but my weapon, somebody say, I got a weapon. You got too many generational cycles, and the reason is you're trying to fight the cycle with the same thing your daddy fought the cycle with. Let me tell you, you got a Holy Ghost in you and prayer in you that the Bible said when I start rejoicing, oh yeah, hell got nervous when you started getting a smile on your face today. That's why, because the joy of the Lord gives me strength, and when I get strength, I might get bold enough to say in the name of Jesus, not today, Satan, that ain't going to get me today. I'm coming out of this thing, but until you want to come out of it, you'll still go around the same spinning wheel that Samson went on. But when enough's enough and you're tired of going through the mess and you're tired of going through the same fall, you'll break out of that thing, not by your mind, but by the spirit of the living God in you. But you got to keep the joy. Some of us walking around say, I got joy. 
I got joy of the Lord. He going to make a way. Walking around like this. All I do is see you cry all the time. When you going to get some joy? Let me tell you, weeping and dirt, there's an appointed time for you to cry, but at some time you need to learn to get a little shout. Sometimes you need to get to learn to get a little bit of a run. Sometimes you got to learn to put a little smile on your face. Stop looking like you've been beat up all the time. Stop looking like, oh, Lord, it's so good. You wait to tell your face that. Because your face looks like you've been through hell and back and look like you ain't had a good time since I don't even know when. But I'm here to tell somebody, I feel a lifting kind of anointing in here. That you're about to get a smile on your face. About to get some laughter back in your life. I wish somebody say, I'm done feeling sad. I'm done crying about it. I got joy when I think about it. Somebody better say it. I got joy. My step is ordered. There's a season to weep. Don't get me wrong. For all you Bible, political Bible people, Joe Dust has returned back to the porches and weeping and fasting. But that ain't where you're supposed to stay. Because it's the joy that gives me strength. From day to day, because why the blood never left it, never lost its power. Because it reaches to the lowest valley. I don't know about you, but I'm thankful to know the blood ain't just for the high tide. But you know why? The step is ordered. But we done lost our joy. So if you ain't got no joy, then how can you let it be known that God's still working? I'm just going to call it like it is. People like, well, you ain't got a shout to get victory. No, but a shout's a product of the victory. People that won't say that, they just too dead and too beat up to open up their mouth to praise somebody. But I bet they'll talk, open up their mouth and murmur and complain about what God ain't done. They'll be the first one to get loud about what he's not doing in their life, but can't even shout and give an amen and wonder why things can't move. Well, what are you entertaining and what are you praising more? Your hell or you're praising the one that's going to break the hell? I tell you, when enough's enough, I guarantee you start opening up your mouth and saying, I thank you, Jesus, that I ain't where I used to be. I thank you, Jesus, I still got a roof over my head. I thank you, Jesus, I might be negative 50 in the bank account, but somebody dropped some food off, and I got a meal in my bed. I thank you, Jesus, I got a coat. I thank you that it's cold outside, but I can sleep somewhere where he don't. So you don't got too bougie fighting, asking God to do stuff that's crazy, that you forgot to be thankful for the small thing that he's provided for you. He made a way for you. It's time for the church to get thankful that there's breath in my body so I can praise the Lord. But rejoice in the Lord. Why is Paul telling them rejoice in the Lord? And they can let it be known. He's letting them know. I can get joy if I'm sleeping in a tent on Tent City. Because why? The rain ain't hitting my forehead. I got a tarp over me still. When it's small things like that, you can get thankful for a tent. Oh, my God. Y'all ain't listening. Some of y'all must have never been sleeping out in the cold weather before. Freeze your hind end off and try to bundle up in a jacket. It ain't fun. And when somebody bless you with a tent, other people say, bless their heart. How can they be happy? You ought to have seen how I was sleeping last week. You would have been thankful for the tent. Don't let other people take your thanksgiving and praise out because it wasn't the same way God brought them out. Because it wasn't their step and it wasn't their order, but it was your order that God said was for you. Who am I preaching to? I tell you, at some point, the cycle got to break. At some point, the church got to learn to be thankful in a living God again. No wonder nobody want to come to church. Church is full of more depressed, sad people than the bar. 
I bet you right now on Super Bowl Sunday, there's people in them bars are packed out at Hooters, drinking their Miller Light and Bud Light, laughing and having a good time, making their bets and wager. But on a Sunday night, you can't even get 100 people in church and make them shout for joy. No wonder they want to go watch the Super Bowl. They can get more life and more dedication out of a Super Bowl team fan than somebody for Jesus. Get out of here with that mess. Your step's ordered when you want to look like you're a Christian. What about, hey, you know, they got, you go watch these fans that play up there in Green Bay, negative 35 degrees. They'll pack out that stadium. They'll all be sitting there shivering. But you can't show up to church because it rains and you're worried about something. You better check it and know if you, you really got to get a hold of Jesus. Guess what? You're going to get what you put into it. You're going to get what you put in the order because the order works two ways. When you go to a drive-thru, guess what? You put the order in, and the one that hears the order brings a request. See, and we can't have no order because you're ordering off something that was never on the menu. No wonder you ain't getting what you order because you ain't working in the order of the kingdom. It ain't that God don't want to hear you. He can't give you something that ain't on the menu. My God, I'm going to. Because he don't make custom steaks. Yeah. There was only one order. And his name was Jesus. And old man, go unto the Father but through me. You want to get your step order? You better start knowing who Jesus is. You can't gawk your step order because you can speak in tongues. You don't know Jesus? I don't care. If you can speak in tongues and lay hands, you ain't going nowhere. You got to know who he is, that my step was ordered, he died for me, and I got joy because he lived. We got more dedications to our football teams than we do to the kingdom. I tell you like it is. You got more loyalty with gangs on the streets being bloods and cribs than in the church. They wear their color. Why are you wearing yours? And guess what he said your color was? Blood bought with the blood blame standard. And nobody can tell if there's a blood blame standard anymore. Because everybody wants to wear their own junk and their own thing. But nobody's wearing Jesus and following after him. No wonder you can't have joy. Because joy can only come with the real thing. We got too many things going on in this world. But somebody got to make up their mind and say, I'm going to rejoice in the Lord always. If it's negative 30, I'm going to praise him. If it's raining, I'm going to praise him. Hey, yeah, yeah, let me tell you, if it's snowing, it's sleeting, whatever it is, I'm going to praise him. You tell me we got an appointed time to meet to worship him, I'll be there. Because why? I crave Jesus more than any other thing in this world. You'll find out what you're going for. You know what? If you got to go to work, guess what? You'll find a way to get to work. You know why? Because you need a paycheck. We need Jesus just as much as we need a paycheck. And I don't know about you, there should be no excuse why we're not worshiping and enjoying with God. That's the problem. Church become a secondary activity rather than being essential. My God. And until the church becomes essential again, that I need my church time just as much as I need my 40, God ain't going to move the way we need him to move. It's time to break the chain. The reason we can't walk in the fullness of God is because you treat God secondary to life. But you want him to be number one in life when you got an issue. Well, you know what? You'll get what you put into it. Yeah. Some people go take a loan to be able to pay a bill. But with that process, you never think about how, how that can go towards the kingdom and get to church. What I'm trying to tell you is your focus and what we have lost are essential to what we consider essential has went a long way. We traded the presence and being in church for an online gathering. And you should not avert to trading being here by watching it online. 
The Bible says to appoint a time and fellowship and do not forsake the fellowship of the saints. You know why? Because there is encouraging, lifting up with other believers. Let me tell you, I don't care how anointed you are and what you think. Be isolated from a body of believers for a little bit and watch it online. It still ain't the same thing. But when you get in the presence with God, with your fellow believer, things begin to happen, things to begin to incur. Because why? That's the way God intended to worship. He says, be careful for nothing. Well, you know, you don't be anxious about it. Speak the truth. If the shoe fits, wear it. If the toe hurts, wear steel toes. It's amen or all me. Brother Michael got that down. I learned that from him. I love that. Amen or all me one. But it all started at church somewhere along the way got deemed secondary. And you know what the product of that is? That's the old sickness that hit this generation this year, over the last two years ago. The audacity of government to shut a church down, but the bar could stay open. Everybody like a devil on the run. Well, you know what? Why are you mad about that? That's how you treat church every week. You just got mad now because somebody told you you couldn't go to church. Uh, yeah, I'm going to preach. Everybody, you got people coming up on Facebook. I can't believe they won't come. Let's go to church. I ain't seen you in church in a year, but all of a sudden now you won't go to church. No wonder they can tell you not to go to church, but if you'd have treated church like it was essential, government wouldn't have shut the church down. Because the church would have said, you can't tell me not to go. Because that's where I got to go. They didn't shut a bar down, did they? No. They had riots in the street over the bar. But the church just sat back and said, you can shut us down. We'll go online and spend more money on that. That's great. We get more online. But that should have never been the equation. You should have never locked your door, shut your door. You should have showed up here and say, let the police show up. Let them do what they're going to do. But we're going to show up and worship God. Because why? My step is ordered. Let me tell you, they can't shut something down. That's alive and living in you. How can we rejoice in the Lord and how can a step be ordered? How can we be lifted up when all we want to do is use a step order in the fall when you need it? God is number one. Your kid ain't number one. God is number one. Some of you need to dethrone the kid and put God number one again. Got kids running the house. No wonder you can't run your own house. God is number one. Then love your husband, love your wife, and then your kids, okay? Your kids don't run the roost. God runs the roost, okay? And me and you're the spiritual head of your home. Raise up and be some men. Put your britches back on. A skirt wasn't meant to run the house. They follow after this. We need men of God to raise up and be men of God. And when men become men again, you'll get some order back in the house again. But our steps are ordered, but the church can't get in order. That ain't the devil's fault. That's the church's fault for not being in alignment. Somewhere along the way, you think it's easier to just say, well, it's not worth the hassle. Let them. Well, that's why the devil all up in your Kool-Aid because you keep on just letting it passively go on and being passively there. Some things they said take this kingdom suffer, take it by violence. Sometimes you got to say, not today. We're going to fight about this. We want that peace of God that surpasses understanding, but yet we cannot let the moderation of God be known to men that they're working. So we're in trouble. Now we live in a day and time that the enemy's worked its way in the mess and all up in the Kool-Aid, and it all started because church become a not a necessity. I bet you need a grocery shop. Did you see them shut down Walmart or anything? But yet, shut down the church. Do you not see where the church has lost its mind? We act like we just the best thing and the church is where it needs to be. The church has lost its mind. 
I guarantee you, in the Spanish flu in 1919, guess what? They were wearing masks, but the church never shut down. The biggest revival had happened. You know why? Because them saints said, you ain't shutting the church down. No, we're going to have church. You know why? Because when there was sickness, the church went and prayed. Bubonic plague. You know what Martha Luther and them did? They put masks on and they went to the camps that nobody else wanted to go to and started laying hands on them with the bubonic plague. That's when the church is the church. I don't want to hear about how you can lay hands on people you know in the church. I want to know if you can go to the hospital when nobody else wants to go because they're worried that they might get it. I need to be vaccinated. I need a booster. No, I got the blood and I'm going to lay hands because the power in me will recover that. That's when you really know if your steps are. Order. That's when you know you're the real deal. We done lost what this thing's about. People don't talk history no more. The kind of man Martha Luther knew his step was order walked up to the church of England and popped the reprimandium on the wall. We don't even celebrate that day no more. That used to be a national holiday. You know why? Because they don't want you to know. That when the church knows their steps ordered and the ride is on the way, you can get the kind of boldness that can walk up the government, pop it on and say, no more. We're walking in the word and serve the notice. And guess what? Be thankful Martha Luther did that because where you're at right now, that's called Protestant. That's where Baptist, Church of God, Methodist, and every one of us come out of. John Wesley, Baptist person, come on. All them leaders, guess what they came off of? The Protestant movement, which came from the Reformation that happened when Martin Luther in 1619 took the hammer and put that thing on tinersy of the Church of England. But we whine and act like God can't move it and how he did. Oh, he can when you put God number one. When you put God number one, watch what he'll do. Y'all ain't listening to this. I, I, I lost half of you right then. Because that requires you to walk by faith. So I said it's a remnant. There'll be a lot of people that are called, but few are chosen. Because few will actually get, I'll just say, I wanted to say something else. But few will man up and put their britches on and stand their ground. I know people like, well, I go just get me. You can't even stand up now. What makes you going to stand up when it's going to get tough? You cry now when you miss a meal and can't get a Big Mac. Come on now. What makes you think you're going to stand up? Hush, sit down. People are like, oh, I'm, I'll stand my ground. Oh, yeah, when you cut your finger or something, you cry about it. And God's been evil and mean. I'm not looking for people to talk about how mean God is. I want some people to raise up and say God's good all the time and God is good. Come on, somebody. Church done lost its mind. You done lost your mind. <laughs> I was going to try to be quick today, but you know. Romans 15, 13 says, Now the God of hope will fill you with all joy. Let us never say joy. There's that word again. Joy and peace in believing that you may abound in the hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. You have power today and a hope because why? He lives. But there has to come back to a revelation of who God is. Not making him second, but making God number one in your life again. You hear me? Making God number one in your life again. You know how we know this thing? I can even go back to when I was a kid in rec ball. You know what? They didn't do tournaments on Sunday. You know why? Because church. They didn't have tournaments on Wednesdays. You know why? Church. And you know how the church has made, how we know that the church has really lost its mind and it's become secondary? They play tournaments now on Sunday and on Wednesday. You know why? Because people don't value church anymore, so the world just follows pursuit. It's not that the world invaded the church. It started in the church not valuing church anymore, and there's nothing holding this community together no more. This is a place where community comes together that we can all come in agreement for one hour, if it just be one hour, to meditate on something higher power than what we are and watch what it can do. That's what happened. We lost that meditation where we sat beside Democrat, Republican, this or that, vaccine under, and we just focus on Jesus for one hour together, and it sets the tune to the community. We've lost that sense of community, and we've traded it for our political parties in our news 
and our football teams and our and this. What about Jesus? Where does he fit in? Where does he fit in? It's so crazy you can get so caught up in life and it be so fast paced that you forget about the man. That's sad. Steps are ordered, and let me tell you, he's coming back. I was telling Brother Tommy, Brother Frank, anybody that listened to me, I'm going to preach the gospel until he lets it up. It might seem just done the same thing over and over, but I'm going to preach the death, the burial, the resurrection, and he's coming back. You know why? Because you need to know that this world ain't the best it's going to be. It's going to fade away. And he's sounding an alarm. And I am convinced that the church has lost its mind and does not even remember that he is coming back. I am convinced that there is a generation rising up that doesn't even realize that Jesus is coming back. Peter said when they staffle at the thought of his coming, know that that is near. How many times do you hear people say, well, Jesus come back? Yeah, I've heard that forever. And they just turn their head and keep on walking. That ought to grieve your soul and heart. He's coming back. And so you know what happened? The church inadvertently has lost faith in that. So they quit, quit preaching that because they don't believe it neither. So the steps ordered, the falls ordered, the ride is on the way. But what has the enemy done? He's took the peace and that assurance of knowing he's coming back for you. And if we lost the fact that he's coming back, then you think this world's the best it's going to be. And what's the product of that? Church becomes secondary. The urgency of being there in the gathering becomes put down because you think you got plenty of time. I tell you, death's not prejudice. He don't care if you're old, young, middle-aged. Some of us think, well, I'm 25, I got plenty of time. Some think, well, I'm 50, I think I got plenty of time. Let me tell you, you're not guaranteed when you walk out that door that there won't be an accident and your moment will come that you meet your Savior. Every man has an appointed time when death will knock on your door because a step is ordered. And when I fall, Will the Lord uphold me with his hand? That said, but I knew him. His step was ordered. Or will you be one of those that said, well, I thought I had time. So I just, t I treated it secondly. So when you don't know about hell and you don't know about heaven and you just preach a worldly thing of a gospel that is there to transform this world, there's no urgency to come to church. There's no urgency to pray. There's no urgency to live right because you think this is all it is. But can I tell you, there's a war between two kingdoms. And it ain't of this world between heaven and hell. And it's after your soul. And if we don't wake up and put him back number one in our lives, I am convinced that some of us that thought you would be all right would be a different story when you opened up your eyes after you drew that last breath. The ride is on the way. The step is ordered. But which way will you go? A ride is coming. But where will your ride take you? What has your steps ordered? Life? Or suffering the eternal death, separation from God. Because when we understand the significance and the urgency of this, I guarantee you, you'll make God number one in your life when you realize this world is just in passing. That there's an eternity in the balance. Some say, well, that's a condemnational message. No, it's not. Condemnation will send you to death. Conviction will bring you to life. I'd rather offend you in your flesh than itch your ears and you die and go to hell. I 
I believe in the blessings of God and the favor of God. But those are not what make me love God. Why I love him is because he sent his only begotten son. Who ordered my step despise my fall. That the blood that was applied over my life that I was undeserving. And he was perfect, but yet he took that punishment. That I could be made new. That in the fall, that the hand of God could pick me back up. And sometimes the ride of the fall and to where we go, it's not always conventional. But God is right there in all of it. And if we realize that God never left us, but he's waiting on us to make that commitment. Then we have the promise that he said, I'll never leave you. And I'll seal you with something that lets you know you're mine. But we cannot deceive ourselves thinking that we can live a fulfilling full life for Jesus while treating him second. Bible said he's a consuming fire, a jealous God. God doesn't want to be second. He's either first or he's nothing. So I ask you today, our step is ordered, but what steps have you took? And today... Was to be your day, <clears throat> that appointed time that God knocked on your door. Would he say, well done, my faithful and humble servant, enter in. Would he say, depart from me, for I did not know you, you worker of iniquity. Bible says that heaven will be silenced for 30 minutes to mourn those, and they'll look up. I don't know about you, but I'd rather take the 30 minutes I have now to call on him because now he can listen. Because your next 30 minute of opportunity, you may not be able to find a way out of hell. But you have a way today to come out of the hell that you're in. But what will you use with your time? I don't know about you. I don't want to wait.